the most famous or infamous <laughs> military base in the world. Nevada's Area 51 is once again generating its share of wild speculation. <laughs> the story continues to circulate that the base has either shut down or moved its most sensitive projects to other less visible locations. Well, 20 years ago this month, Eyewitness News started an investigation which put Area 51 on the map, and tonight the I-team's George Knapp is here to tell us if Area 51 has perhaps been traded in for a newer model. Well, as we all know, the reason that uh, Area 51 became a household name is because of the allegations of flying saucers out there, things that were made uh, somewhere else. In aviation circles, a lot of people figured that story was pure disinformation concocted by the military to perhaps draw attention away from something else that was going on out there. And if that's the case, then the tactic surely backfired on the Air Force because as a result of the saucer story, Area 51 became known all over the world and is still a focus of attention. Is it too much attention to get their work done? Civilian pilots and other eyewitnesses have been seeing strange things in the skies in and around this restricted airspace that straddles the Nevada-Utah border. If there's a base hidden out here in this desert, it certainly isn't easy to spot but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Contrary to persistent media reports, the world's most famous secret base, the original Area 51, is doing just fine. A 1997 article in Popular Mechanics magazine claimed the whole place had shut down and moved to eastern Utah so the military could work on a secret space plane. Not true. Nearly every day, the unmarked planes ferry employees from a terminal at McCarran up to Groom Lake. Buses with blacked out windows still rumble up and down the long gravel road. Road. Satellite photos show the facility, that's the only term the government will use, the facility operating at Groom Lake is bigger than ever with new hangars and other buildings. And that means the cottage industry that's grown up around the base continues to thrive as well. In Rachel, the little Ailey Inn still sells beam me up Scotty highballs and ET merchandise. At the other end of the extraterrestrial highway, the rival Area 51 Research Center sells its own merchandise under the shadow of a 30 foot tall alien robot. Curious types armed with cameras and high-powered lenses still trek through the desert or climb the mountains to get a glimpse of the base. Well, there's several, uh, actually nine uh, flying saucers. Flying Things took a radical turn for Area 51 in 1989 when a man named Bob Lazar made the outrageous claim that he had worked on flying saucers at a facility called S-4 in the Area 51 complex. Ever since Lazar told his story, the world has beaten a path to Area 51's door, which is why it might make sense for them to move their most sensitive projects to a place with a lower profile, one that attracts less attention. Everybody knows about Area 51 and Groom Lake. What the uh, the interesting thing is, is I don't think there's anything there anymore. I mean, John Lear has done as much as anyone to put Area 51 on the map. He knows there are still programs underway out there, but suspects the most sensitive projects, ones involving the most exotic technology, perhaps something resembling flying saucers, have been moved. Lear thinks some of the most advanced work is now being done at a sister facility, Area 52, within the Tonopah test range. But he's even more intrigued by a vast and remote section of desert south of Wendover, Nevada, on the Utah-Nevada line. Lear, an accomplished pilot whose father invented the Lear jet, still has numerous friends in the aviation world. And they tell him stories about or seeing camouflaged runways that open up in the middle of nowhere. But when the pilots land, they tell me that as they're coming in, uh, being radar vectored, at 500 feet, they'll look down and it'll be just like forest or, you know, desert or just normal landscape and all of a sudden it'll unzip like this and they'll see a runway. Our own search of the area south of Wendover found no evidence of runways or military facilities, though others are looking as well. Utah UFO hunters, perhaps yearning for an Area 51 of their very own, have proposed that a planned massive expansion of Dugway Proving Grounds is part of a program to create a new Area 51. They also note that Michael Air Base, which controls the airspace south of Wendover, has, like Dugway, been the site of some very strange things seen in the skies, including saucer-type craft and shafts of light that seem to emanate from the ground. The one thing we've learned from chasing after the original Area 51 is we're unlikely to find out much unless they want us to know. If something's going on out there, they don't want anyone to know about it. They're not going to know about it. It's, it's not going to happen. 
The man you just heard from there talking about secrecy is T.D. Barnes. He worked as a CIA radar specialist out at Area 51 for many years and is president of an organization called the Roadrunners, former Groom Lake employees who today are much freer to talk about what went on out there because some material has been declassified. On our website are links to the Roadrunners and to other sites where you can learn a lot more about Area 51 and the other places that were mentioned in tonight's story. Tomorrow at 11, a look at how deeply Area 51 has been ingrained in our cultural fiber, and we'll update you on Bob Lazar and things he said 20 years ago, which turned out to be right on the money. So, so the guys at Area 51 must be kind of happy that the media is saying nothing's going on there, so we're going to like move along, you know. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure that there are many who think just that, that, you know, just as the flying saucer story might have been created as disinformation that uh, as a diversion ploy, so was this story about the base has been mm -hmm. shut down, and I hear it all the time. Uh, people who say they read it somewhere, Area 50 wasn't, isn't, isn't there anymore, and it's probably deterred a lot of people from going out sure. there, which means a lot fewer headaches for the people who run the base. The fact is, Area 51 is alive and well. There is no other place like it in the world. And even if they have moved some other things, different places, that place is very, very Still busy. Still humming, huh? Yeah. All right. Thanks, George. Thanks, George.